coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next C sharp model game tutorial. And in this tutorial we're gonna be coming we're gonna be covering a bit more than, than we covered in the last tutorial, but um um it, it'll be pretty cool in my uh, I think you'll find it pretty cool. Uh, so what I want you to do is open a program like paint.net or paint or whatever and I want you to create um, I want you to resize the image and resize it to whatever your tile size is so 32 by 32 and um, What I want you to do is create four different images like that and what you could do is just make this transparent and make four different images so one what we want is one for the um, one one image for the first tinge or for the for the first side we want one image for the next side one image for the bottom corner one image for the bottom right corner and um you can do it any way you want but i've said it this way uh for a reason but it's up to you whichever way you want the box to be but your code might be slightly different depending on the way you've done your code. So keep, I mean, the way you've drawn your selector. So keep that in mind. Now I'm just gonna show you the way I've done it. So um, I should get rid of this. So what I'm gonna do is just create a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder editor. And I'm gonna add in some new items. I'm gonna have my, uh, my few, my selectors right here. So I have four different images, and if I show you those four different images, um, okay, I'll show you them right here. So I have one on the bottom hinge. I have another image on the on the bottom right hinge, one on the top left hinge, and one on the top right hinge. Now you don't have to do it like the way I did it, but if you do it the way I did it, you have to take note that your code will be a bit. It might be slightly different. So what we want to do now is we want to, in our editor class, we want to make an image called selector and, or sorry, we should make a list of images, call it selector, selectors or whatever. And uh, we're just going to initialize our list. And uh, what, we're, what we're gonna do now is we'll just say, um, right here we have four images. So we're just gonna say four int less than four. And we're gonna say selected our add new image. So in our initialize, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through each one. And there's no point in looping through the count or anything. We just have to loop till four because we we know this, its size, right? And instead of it having to look for count and find the value, we just specify it. So it gives us some bigger performance boost per se. So we're gonna say selector i, and uh, we're gonna say selector i dot path is equal to, and uh, we're going to make a string. We're going to make string array and we'll call it selector path and we're going to put we're going to put it in the this order so we're going to say selector t1 which is going to be the top left corner and oh it's in the editor folder so we need the top right image now so editor selector t1 and in this case yes order does matter and we need the bottom left. And we're gonna have the bottom right. And you're gonna see why the order does matter. This should be B1 and the other one is B2. I know you can't see it, but uh, it is editor slash selector B2. Well, now you can see it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to have a for loop and we're gonna say our path is equal to selector path i. Simple enough. So, and then we'll just, we'll put the brackets here, the braces here, and we'll make a call selector i dot uh, initialize. Done. 
dot initialize. Make sure it's after the content manager so you can pass it in. So we've gotten our selectors uh, set and I made it public for a reason because our tile display is going to need it. So what we can do is I guess we'll make a list of uh, selector a list of images and we can call it selector and what we will do in our load content will say selector is equal to editor dot selector okay and so we've got that set so now we're going to uh, we're going to make a boolean and we're going to say is mouse down and by default is going to be false so now we're going to use the controls function so we're going to check we're going to check for a mouse down event, what happens and, and a bunch of different events. So we're gonna say mouse down. So what happens when we press the mouse down? Uh, we're gonna have a mouse up and we're just gonna say plus equals, we're gonna put delegate and we're just gonna say is mouse down equals uh, false. That's all we're gonna put. And we're gonna say uh, mouse move. And just cut this, paste right there. Okay, so we have mouse down and we have mouse move. So we're gonna say that, uh, we're gonna say that if is, if not is mouse down, then we're gonna do something with it. And what we're gonna do is we're going to have a vector two for our mouse position and our click position. And what we're gonna say is we're gonna say click position is equal to uh, mouse position and we're going to loop through our selectors. So uh, image, image, and selector. And we're gonna say image dot position equals to mouse position. And last but not least, we're gonna say is mouse down is equal to true because we're pressing down the mouse button. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say our mouse position is equal to, so we're going to have a new vector 2, and it's going to be the E dot X divided by, and uh, we need to, uh, we need to uh, get the, the tile dimensions, right? So we're going to say E X divided by um, E dot uh, sorry editor dot map or oh yeah so we'll say current layer dot and we need to get tile dimensions now I never went through this tutorial but what I did is I just made a vector a property that returned the tile dimensions now something I, I kind of froze there because I, I would just I just had a thought like um, what we did is we made our images 32 by 32, but let's uh, for our selector. But let's say uh, let's say for example the person's tiles are 64 by 64, or so on and so forth. What what you would do is you would just scale each of the images to fit that. But um, the reason why we never use one image and we use four images is that is that when we go to drag and like. Um, drag the image or drag the selector to see what region we select it becomes a bit distorted because we're scaling it uh, so we don't really want to do that that's why we separate it into four different images then we'll move it based on the position uh, that we need to move it at so anyways um, we will get the tile dimensions dot x and we want it to, we want to cast it to an int so we'll say e dot y divided by editor dot current layer dot tile dimensions dot y and if you really care about performance you're probably not going to want to keep doing this so you'll probably create a vector up here that will store the current layers position so you don't have to keep on calling this and it will save on up performance a little bit it, it will help you a little bit but it won't be noticeable in our in this project and then uh, that is basically it for the position. And so we're gonna say mouse position, 
times equals 32. So what is this going to do? So let's say I'm at the position um, uh, 201. Uh, say it's 201, 201. Okay, so 201 is the x-coordinate, 201 the y-coordinate. What this is going to do is going to say 201 divided by 32, and this gives us a dec uh, gives us a decimal, but we cast it to an int, so it's going to return to 6. So then we're going to say 6 times 32. So that's the tile we're on. So it's going to round it to a tile, which is a multiple of our dimensions. So that's going to give us the mouse position. And now we're going to say that if... Um, we're going to say that if the mouse position is not equal to the click position and um, we're, and mouse and is mouse down equals to true. Okay. Or actually, um, yeah, we'll just do something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through each one and we'll just do it till four because we only have four images. And we're going to loop through each one of them and we're going to do some, we're going to do uh, uh, some interesting things with this. So let me see if you guys can catch on. So we're going to say if I modulus two is equal to zero and mouse position dot X is less than click position dot X then we're going to say that um, selector i dot position equals mouse position dot x and we're going to say else if i modulus to not equal zero and mouse position dot x is greater than click position dot x we're going to say selector i dot position is equal to mouse position dot x and we're going to say else if i is less than 2 and mouse position dot y is less than click position dot y then we're going to say selector i dot position is equal to mouse position dot y or should be dot x dot x dot y and we'll say else if i is greater than or equal to 2 and mouse position dot y is greater than click position dot y then selector i dot position dot y is equal to mouse position dot y so um what and what we're going to do is we'll just say else um we'll say selector i dot position or we'll loop through them for each image and selector image dot position is equal to mouse position so what is going on here so remember when i said loading it in the order does matter so it, it really does it, there's a reason why so I said right now we're gonna loop through the images and if the I modulus 2 is equal to 0 so if it is an even if it's an even index then we're gonna and the mouse position dot X is less than click position dot X then we're gonna set the new position for X so this is what it's saying so what it what is what is it what is the even index so we have our t1 this is the for this will be loading first so that's index 0 t2 is index 1 b1 is index 2 and b2 is index 3 so t1 and b1 are both the even indexes so if the mouse position dot x is less than the click position so um in the position that we initially clicked down um, then we're going to move those t positions towards the left. So we're going to move them more. So what this is basically saying is saying, okay, so if we clicked right here, I clicked right here, and then I'm holding it and I drag it along the left, what's going to move is going to move the the left, the top left hinge and the bottom left hinge is going to move those to the right, to the left, sorry. That's what it's going to do. 
And so it says, okay, if they're not, if they're odd, right, and the mouse position X is greater than click position X, then what it's saying is going to move the right hinges, it's going to move it to the right. And that's why I said, depending on how you've done your selector, this arithmetic might be different. This is how to do with the way I've done it and so on and so forth. The rest of it is self-explanatory. Now, if mouse isn't, um, if the if the mouse click position is equal to click position or um or the mouse isn't down or whatever all we're going to do is just reset it to reset all of them to the same position now why do i reset them all to the same position well if you look at my image they're all 32 by 32 pixels just that they draw at a different section so if we draw them all at the same position then it's going to look like one entire box and that is why we do that um, so with that being said all we got to do now or I think uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a call to editor or we're just gonna say we're just gonna loop through these and selector image dot draw and um, Oh, there is something else that I forgot to do, but it, as you can see, it draws this, right? But it doesn't update our position, right? It draws it, but it doesn't update. And when we do, when we work with win forms, we have to make a call to something called invalidate. And uh, when we call, when we do mouse move, that's when we're gonna call invalidate. So we're gonna call it at the bottom. And what invalidate does is that it says, okay, whenever you can um refresh the screen or draw the section of the screen which needs to be updated so as you can see i do this and everything's gone you're like what the hell but and this is not working properly so i click and drag and that is not working properly so it looks like we did something or i did something retarded just need i just need to check it out figure it out <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry oh man I just choked <coughs> whoa that's embarrassing <coughs> anyways oh man I'm gonna pause the video I need some water well sorry about that <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing but whatever um so where was I yeah so um the problem I made is that I made all of these else's at this uh, a lot of all these can be well I should have changed this from an else if to an if. The reason being is that right here, it can't be less than and greater than at the exact same time. So that's why you put an if and else if. But at the same time, the act, um, this can be, one of these can be executed and these are the, one of these can be executed at the same time as well. Um, so that's why we have to do it like that. And if you notice when we do that, we got some, a little cool animation um, that shows our selector but where where's everything in our tile display gone it's completely gone and uh, what we need to do is we need to go to our layer class and remember we're taking the image from our layer but remember we what every single time we draw we modify the position of it and what it's doing it's drawing it at the new modified position so what we have to do after we're done drawing is we have to say image dot position we go to vector to zero to reset it back to the initial position and we have to reset the source right so we'll say source right is equal to um, image dot texture dot uh, dot balance and by doing that it should fix the problem and as you can see it fixes the problem and then we can select a few that uh, we can select some things so that's it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we're gonna be actually selected being we're gonna actually be able to select things and then draw what we selected on the screen but that is for the next tutorial so I hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching don't forget to comment subscribe and bye for now